my daughter is going to give 10 inches. You see? Let's see your face on the camera, on the screen. Enjoy. So we have, what are we waiting for? We're waiting for. <laughs> There's uh, our mayor, and that's Crystal Thomas. That's our city attorney. You can wave to her. Yeah, we uh, rotate one year. Everybody gets a year in the barrel. Bob, who's special guest? Nevin, uh, Renee's uh, grandson, one of them. Oh, wow. Yeah, we're over here to pool our pool party. Yeah, going that's cool. cool. Yeah, they're moving in. His uh, family's moving into a new house. So all the kids are over here for the day. Nice. Keeping an eye on me, making sure I stay out of trouble. <laughs> uh, is he here or is he? Yep. I'm here. Oh, there you are. How you doing? Good. How are you? Good. How are things in everybody's world? Probably not as challenging as yours. Uh, yeah. It's a little, a little interesting these days, that's for sure. Oh, yeah. Good to see everybody, though. <laughs> Steve, we ready to go? Uh, I think we're ready to go. and We're waiting for... Did... Crystal, did you... I'm trying to get my background to work. Looks like you're putting a mask on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're waiting for Councilman Zimmerman, but we can go ahead and go if you want. Okay, let's get let's get started. Um, I'd like to welcome everyone who's watching this telecast. I hope you all well. Due to COVID-19 pandemics, we're conducting this meeting remotely via technology. As a result of the governor's emergency declaration and a temporary adjustment to the Brown Act, we're able to continue with the city business while also protecting the health and safety of our residents. Consistent with this direction, we have asked that all public comments be submitted in advance of this meeting. As we get to each item, our city manager will identify any public comments that have been submitted. The meeting is being streamed and Villa Park TV is done normally. For those interested, it will be rerun on Villa Park TV and our website afterwards is regularly done. Uh, we've attempted to plan for all contingencies. Please bear with us as we move through this process. Hopefully, uh, soon we'll be meeting in person. I hope. Uh, until then, let's get started. I hereby call the meeting to order. Steve, will you please call the roll? Okay. Uh, Councilman Colicott? Here. Councilman Rossini? Here. Councilman Zimmerman? I don't believe he's on. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Miles and Mayor Pitts. Here. For the record, we also have uh, Maddie uh, on our in our office here, and we have City Attorney Todd um, and myself. Okay. Well, today I think I'll, I'll lead everyone in the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. So if you'll please, uh, are we going to show the flag? Uh, Maddie, turn the flag on you. Okay. And on to your heart, ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Okay. I believe we have some things that we're going to. We have any public comments that were submitted today? No, sir. Okay. Anyone wrote in from the public that we need to address? No. Okay. 
So now we'll move into our agendized public hearing. Our first hearing is to, uh, Steve, would you please let us know what we're reviewing today? Okay, uh, thank you, Mayor. To, the first item has to do with the Federal CARES Act funding agreement. Basically, uh, the CARES Act, and it's the acronym, and I don't, uh, I don't want to know what they all stand for, but basically federal money that was approved by in late March uh, by uh, Congress and signed by President Trump. Uh, basically, it establishes um, aid to localities and states and localities regarding uh, their responses to the co uh, coronavirus uh, 19. Uh, with respect to um, Orange County, the monies basically went to any uh, city or municipality with a population over 500,000. So in Orange County, the only entity that got the money uh, was the County of Orange, and that's about 554,000. Uh, 554 million, 55 million uh, that they received. Uh, basically, the, the funds were intended to address uh, a number of issues. The Department of Treasury issued um, some guidance with that. But after dealing with their public health priority and public safety priorities, the County Board of Supervisors uh, set aside 75 million for economic recovery and another 26 million for reimbursement for city expenses that would not otherwise be uh, covered by FEMA or any other type of emergency reimbursement claim. So with respect to the 25, 75 million economic recovery, the board divided it equally, uh, 15 million each for the five supervisorial districts. Uh, Villa Park is part of the third supervisorial district uh, with Supervisor Don Wagner. Uh, Supervisor Wagner made the decision to allocate his 15 million entirely for uh, to the cities based on a population based and in, intended for economic recovery activities. For Villa Park, that amounts to about $147,000. Um, we received, as the mayor and I on last Friday, uh, the mayor and I received a check personally delivered by Supervisor Wagner. Um, that was preceded by an agreement in which I had to sign with the, um, the county, which basically is a uh, the rules of the, of the administration, meaning that we have to report within a certain time frame back the monies have to be spent between uh, March, uh, end of March and end of December this year. So the monies uh, that you'll recall, that, that 147 was allocated for economic recovery. You recall that on uh, April 28th, the city council adopted the Villa Park Business Recovery Grant Program. So it's a good fit, a perfect match. So with that in mind, the 147,000 will be allocated toward that. Um, claim, but in one of the the first action that will be requested of you today as part of this item would be to ratify the agreement that I signed with the county so as, as that we could receive those monies. Um, and basically, the, the the biggest hitch, if you will, is that we agree that if those monies are spent inappropriately, uh, we would have to reimburse the county, or or in fact, if we don't spend them, we would have to return them to the county. Those are the two provisions that are probably most significant for the city. Uh, neither of which are problematic um, from our perspective uh, with the program we've set up. Um, and, and I can go into the business recovery in just a minute, but the, the second, the 26 million was set aside for the county to uh, address, like I say, the reimbursement for activities that we otherwise aren't gonna be reimbursed for. We submitted a claim to FEMA about $49,000 for various activities. We've already received a number of inquiries from FEMA uh, I want to say about 10 questions. They are pretty uh, thorough. Uh, and we provided invoices. We provide, you know, I had to respond to questions and whatnot. On a best case scenario, FEMA reimburses about 75% of the approved claims. Um, so under the best case scenario, we would get about $37,000 or leaving an unreimbursed balance of 12000 The monies on this CARES Act would have to be spent for the purposes of our recovery activities. This could not be commingled with our economic recovery monies. That's a provision. The county is in the process of finalizing an agreement uh, and it will be very similar to the first agreement, only very specific about these monies must be used to, for the coronavirus activities that we've done or undertaken. Um, so if this, again, this money is again going to be divided uh, population-wise, 
And if you do that, we roughly translate, we'll get of the uh, 26 million, the uh, city of Villa Park will have approximately 52,000 that would be allocated to us. Now the final allocation hasn't been determined yet because the counties are still working through all that and the agreement is still pending. But the second action that is being requested today would be that authorizes me to sign the similar agreement uh, with the county so that we can be uh, receive those monies. Uh, so that's the second action. The third and final action that would be requested would be to allow us to appropriate those funds to spend them. They were not included in our budget. And uh, as such, they need to be basically recognized by the council and uh, authorize us to put them into the budget and appropriate monies against those. So those are the actions. Going back to uh, the business recovery grant program, well, kind of what happens next? So after the council takes these three actions, the uh, one of the things, the money is already received for the business grant recovery program. So um, possibly as early to, as tomorrow, but more likely Thursday, we'll be issuing the guidance online for the business grant recovery program. We've been working with the volunteers from the investment advisory committee. Uh, and we have an online application process. Uh, people will have the ability to um, submit it online. Uh, we also, in case they have some problems, we have hard copies that can be submitted, uh, but we would certainly prefer just because of the process, we'd like to move along expeditiously uh, that it be done online. And there's a, a whole, uh, we're using SurveyMonkey, which allows you to uh, ap apply it and, and put it all through in an application process. So, uh, and then it also allows for a review process. The timing on that would be the council would take action on the 23rd to ratify or to approve the uh, recommended uh, slate of, of grants. No grant in and of itself would be more than 10,000, but there's no reason that, you know, there might be something less, it will be dependent. The various criteria, et cetera, will be laid out. And I don't know them off the top of my head, but the criteria is all laid out, but it's primarily focused on small businesses, under 20 employees uh, that either work or uh, that provide services or are located to Villa Park, res in, in Villa Park uh, proper. So um, there are, uh, it'll be assigned categories and, and uh, numerical evaluation tools, et cetera, that are being used. So it's a, a very well thought out process. We're very fortunate to have some wonderful volunteers that are helping us uh, in this process. Uh, but that process will culminate in the award of the contract on the, the approval of the awards on the 23rd. And we, since we have the monies, we'll be able to issue the checks almost immediately thereafter. So within the next two weeks, two and a half weeks, checks will be in the hands, hopefully, of those businesses, small businesses that will need them. Uh, granted, 147000 is is not a lot of money, but it is a significant, significant amount, amount of money, of money. Uh, when you consider <laughs> that uh, some of these businesses have had no revenue uh, for a couple weeks now. Uh, this is the first uh, allotment of money that we believe there could be as many as three other uh, funding sources that will come through, but those probably a best case scenario would happen in July. Um, the, the first would be from a state allocation of CARES Act money. The second would be from a grant application that we're submitting through the Department of Commerce. And the third would be a um, would be potential additional federal money that there's being, uh, the House already passed it in Washington and I believe the Senate has now uh, adopted a similar, or uh, let me say, they've taken up the matter in, in their discussion. So uh, we were hearing that it'd be late June, early July before that sort of is, is concluded and allocations would be made. In those instances, much of that money, instead of going through the county, could in fact come through to the county, to the city directly. But again, the details are still pending and we'll have to wait and see. But uh, we'll, we'll hopefully be able to have gotten out that first phase, we'll be all out and going. And um, so the business grant recovery will be well in way. And, and thanks to the council taking action early and being ready, we're, we're ready to move on. I will just for the record, because the council had been taken action early uh, and we were ready, we actually received a number of, of cities uh, requesting our input and using us as a prototype of how the process will go. So we're, we're pretty fortunate uh, that we were kind of out front on this and I'm, I'm very appreciative of the support and active involvement of the city council. So um, that is it. Uh, the action on the, the city count, the actions that were taken from the city council. Uh, I, I know that I mentioned that we, if FEMA gives us all the money we were reclaiming, we, uh, we could end up with still 12,000 unreimbursed. 
there is a significant portion of our monies of our response time for PPE for, for instance, the sheriff and fire uh, that was unreimbursed. Uh, that wasn't directly charged to our budget. Um, well, it will it will be charged to our budget. And when that does happen, there's there's we're working with the county to explore the opportunity to use some of that CARES money of that the 52,000 for that purpose, which would then subsequently reduce our uh, sheriff's uh, contract budget amount. So uh, we're working through that in a creative way. The CEO and I've had uh, the county and I've had some discussions about it. Um, they're they're kind of working through that because it involves a lot of, of, of work uh, just mechanically. So that that has to, ha to happen. Um, and the county has not distributed those monies yet. So we're trying to figure out what the best way to all of these monies will be subject that probably 200,000 will have will be subject to future audit by federal audit requirements. So um, that being said, all the programs and the activities that we're doing have been documented and well, um, well recorded. So I believe that we'll be able to uh, hold our own with any audit down the road. So the three actions again would be to approve ratify the agreement that I signed for the economic support monies under 47,000 authorize me to sign uh, the sub recipient agreement with the county for the the activities we've been taken in the amount of an estimated 52,000 and allow us to appropriate those monies and take action to uh, spend on those monies. So those are the, the three activities and I'd recommend approval and I can certainly answer any questions. Okay. Council members, any questions? I have a question. Um, in regards to the 147,000 that were apportioned from um, Don Wagner um, distributing the funding and the parameter that we have to spend it between March and December, once the investment advisory committee identifies those businesses that are going to be um, eligible for the grant, do they have to spend it between March and December as well? Or is it just we have to spend it between March? The, the money has to be spent and, and I believe um, it counts as them actually spending it. It's not just being awarded, but they would have to spend it. They would have to spend it. Okay, so that leads me to my next question. Have you um, spoken with Mr. Underwood about, um, are they going to provide the oversight for any of the awardees of the grant money and making sure that it's spent? Yeah, we, the, 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 the way the requirements go is there's a 90 day reporting requirement and in there, uh, they have to report, and there's a time frame in which they have to spend the money. And so there's documentation required as part of a midterm spend and then a final. Uh, it's, uh, that's built into the program, if you will. So there'll be probably a couple bursts of it. There'll be the initial burst to get this all going. Then after that, the, the entities will spend it. And a lot of these people have already had to pay their rents, pay their unemployment insurance, and those kinds of things. So I would imagine those receipts will come. From, these can be retroactive payments back to March. So they can reimburse themselves for anything back to that. They would just have to show us documentation of that regard. Okay, and then I have one more question you may not know the answer to. Um, you had mentioned that uh, one of the requirements that the investment advisory committee or subcommittee of um, people putting on this or designing the grant application is that in order for them to be considered a small business in Villa Park, they have to have 20 or fewer employees. Does that leave anybody out um, does that leave anybody out? We have 500 businesses, so there are a lot of people will be left out. Ralph's has more than 20 employees. A lot of these people have more than 20 employees. This money was intended is because of the amount and the focus is really that first tranche is really enabling, uh, trying to help those smaller businesses that probably have the least chance of, of being able to absorb. They, they have the least amount of capital to be able to absorb the short term. So this amount of money now, now down the road, that discussion, we can certainly address that. But for the first phase of it, I think that the, it is intended. And it, it is clearly in the documentation of the federal legislation geared for um, small business. Now, the federal government describes smaller business in this instance as 20 employers or fewer. But uh, we're so we're trying to be very, uh, we're trying to hit the smallest that probably hit the, had the biggest hit so far. But yeah, and, and just for clarity, I wasn't referring to Ralph's, obviously they're a corporation, but I just wasn't sure if there were any true small businesses in Villa Park that, that had like 21, you know, I don't know if Rockwell's does or if the vet does or something like that. So that's all. Thanks. So yeah, so you're right. There will be people that, you know, that uh, if we have 500 businesses, and 147,000, we're not going to hit everybody. 
So I, I, I would expect that demand will exceed uh, available resources, but I think the point would be we're trying to get out the first that we can, and hopefully those that need it most are the smallest that have the least cash flow or reserves available to them. Okay, thank you. Question for you. Councilman Zimmerman. Did you talk about, um, is this like a, is it a, gonna be a comprehensive pack? Like all of the, the grant proposals come in and then you do the decision or is it like first come first serve or how do you? We'll, we'll have a time period. So it wouldn't preclude somebody to apply um, or not apply. We have, but there's a designated time period. So they'll all come in and they'll all be evaluated at the same time. Okay. And okay. then have we identified like, or has the process for how we split that money up? So if there's like 15 people that come in and say we want 10 grand that covers it. And then there's like a bunch of other that are five grand. Do, are we thinking that we split them all up among all of them or? I think there's a rating criteria and there's been a discussion among the panel about how they would evaluate those. So there's a rating criteria. So they content first and then amount second. I think they're trying to divvy it up to hit the most bang for their buck. So if there's a number that will go smaller and there'll be some that will be well under $10,000 my suspicion. My guess is that I'm not the only person asking these questions. And there's probably some document or something that they've produced. Do we have that yet? Or is that? It, I will be released, like I say, tomorrow, uh, maybe as early as tomorrow, but more likely Thursday, just because they're doing some final proofreads. Obviously, we want to make sure that we've dotted our I's and crossed our T's before we send it out to avoid any confusion. Uh, but I, that will be all clearly laid out. All right. And thanks very much. Excellent. That was it. Councilman Rossini. Uh, you guys have basically covered everything that I wanted to uh, discuss. Uh, I, I guess the, the main thing is I'm just concerned that we keep this very um, specific to Villa Park businesses, uh, not businesses that um, do a tremendous amount of uh, or have a tremendous amount of um, clientele outside uh, of the city. It's intended for Villa Park businesses that do business in Villa Park. Um, so uh, I don't know if that's uh, making complete sense, but you guys have asked the lion's share of my questions and, um, I'm very thankful for the work that, uh, Steve, you've done on this. I think that, uh, our city is setting the bar, um, and we're going to be, um, very fortunate to, uh, get this money out to our, our businesses and that's all I've got. Okay. Thank you. Councilman. Uh, Uh, no comments. It's an excellent program, and I support it completely. Um, and uh, uh, thank you, Steve, for uh, taking the lead on this. Okay. Any other discussions, questions? <clears throat> okay. I'll close the public hearing. Is there a motion on this matter? So moved. Second. So we have a motion and a second. Steve, we call the roll, please. Okay. Uh, Councilman Cullicott? Yes. Councilman Rossini? Yes. Councilman Zimmerman? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Miles? Yes. Mayor Pitts? Yes. Passes 5 0. Okay, the second item is our update. Um, Mayor, if, if you want me to go ahead. Yes, please. Okay, the second item is our uh, update, just a total update. I sent out the numbers. Um, over, overall in the county, there were 100 cases reported today. Uh, let me start by answering the question. There were no new cases for Villa Park, so we're still at eight. Um, unfortunately, there were 100 new cases. Uh, total, it's about 6,500, uh, 6,600 uh, out there. Uh, there were, in the county, three new deaths, unfortunately. Um, two of those deaths, I believe, were in skilled nursing facilities or nursing facilities. Um, there were about a 1,500 tests reported today, almost 1,600. So cumulatively, there are about 136,000 tests in Orange County that have taken place. Um, there are 240 people in the hospital right now, 97 of which are in ICUs. Villa Park remains at eight cases. Of, and I do for the purposes of kind of a new number they've started up. They're an estimated of those um, 6,500 cases, they believe that 2,700 of them have recovered. So that's sort of people are always asking. So for instance, we the number of eight that we have in Villa Park, I don't believe you would all consider all eight of them still active because we've had a lot of them for a long time. So that number is far less. How, how many are actually recovered? I don't know because apparently COVID is, is, can last for a while in their systems. 
Um, but bottom line, um, Villa Park has been very fortunate. Our numbers are relatively low, which is good. I mean, by comparison, population-wise per capita. Again, it is it is um, countywide. The numbers are much higher, um, but we still have a few new. Last two weeks, we've had a couple new cases, so um, that would be. However, that would be ex something that's expected. Uh, very candidly, when you start doing more testing, which they're doing right now, uh, and if anyone is interested in doing more testing, they can get online. Uh, the county has. Um, for any essential worker, basically anybody who's working right now can go get tested, whether they're symptomatic or asymptomatic, they can go get tested. Um, and also you can go through your own private provider. And I believe uh, like mine the other day asked me if I was in for checkup, he asked if I wanted to test. So they, uh, they are private providers will be doing it. Uh, the county, there is no charge if you go through that. Um, they're both testing for um, antibodies and if the um, antigens as well. So there's two types of tests. Uh, that they're doing and um, they're moving forward. So those numbers would fall in there. So anyway, so as far as the um, activities, the city hall has now re reopened and we're in fully, fully operational. Um, we are at this point running and uh, a normal operation. You don't have to call for appointment. Uh, all the modifications have been made. Uh, we do ask for some people's cooperate, oh, everyone's cooperation when they walk into city hall that they be wearing a mask and that they um, check their, their temperature when they walk in and we maintain social distance. Um, we have put up some partitions that are plexiglass to kind of keep staff directly away from it. But uh, I think you'll still find Villa Park a friendly and welcoming city hall that people can come in and get a lot of business done. Uh, we have had um, tried to make some extra efforts like we say for the business recovery grants and things so people can do some work online. And if they don't feel comfortable, they don't necessarily have to come into city hall. Uh, but we're happy to see people coming in and we have people coming in very happy to be here. So um, that being said, we have um, the sheriff and, and all activities continue as normal in Villa Park. And I don't believe uh, you'll say you'll see anything except uh, I would just comment that Mike, um, Mike Knowles told me that uh, he's doing a little bit of waving as opposed to talking to people up close and walking up to their car when they drive by because he's trying not to get or to, to observe social distance. So Wave to Mike, if you will, but uh, don't stop and get too close because he's trying to be careful of the social distance requirements. So anyway, otherwise we're doing, we're doing well in the city and things are moving forward. We will have our budget uh, meeting next Monday night at five o'clock, our second budget workshop, uh, and we're progressing forward. So with that, I can available to answer any questions. Anybody have questions, comments? Okay, Councilman Rossini, did you have a question? No, just, just wanted to say thank you for everything that uh, Steve, you've done and uh, the rest of the council. And I appreciate all the kind thoughts and messages that I've received lately during these uh, extraordinarily tumultuous, tumultuous times. Stay safe. Okay. Steve, any other business to come for council? Nope. Just we're to adjourn when you're ready. Okay. Oh, yeah, I would just announce that our meeting budget meeting is at five o'clock next Monday, and it will be a Zoom uh, workshop that we'll be conducting. Um, the county is still in stage two. However, the governor mentioned stage three is in the offing, and what that means, we won't know until later this week or next week. I don't know. I mean, it, we don't know if there'll be stages to it or whatnot, but I did receive something today um, just as an FYI that the county is moving forward to try and move, open up pools, community pools. It doesn't directly affect us in Villa Park, but just as sort of the, the an FYI. And in stage three, you will start to see uh, nail places and schools and those things will be opening. So uh, there is some light at the end of the tunnel and uh, we'll see when that happens. We should okay. start by opening Crystal's pool first. It's pretty nice. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'll second that. <laughs> yeah. Full time. All right. So thank you for your time. I appreciate it. I'm, I'm going ahead and, and uh, adjourn this meeting. Good to see you all. Good, Good night, all. Thank Be safe. All. Thank you. Bye.